Hi, Kona Text here with a short series of videos about creating a custom Linux kernel. So what the video is going to be showing is getting the kernel and configuring it for the machine you're compiling for and um, compiling the actual comp kernel, installing it and then testing it. I'll also be showing you um, an easy way to update the kernel um, at each release um, and how uh, th there's features within the kernel to make that a lot simpler for us. I'm going to be showing you how to build the kernel using the original generic, if you like, source code rather than um, building from a particular um, distribution. Um, probably what I'm going to show you is most akin to how it will be done if you're uh, building Linux from scratch for, uh, sorry, for building a kernel for Linux from scratch, um, as after all that's a source-based uh, distribution and everything's done by hand. So if if you followed my Linux from scratch videos before and you've seen me, you know, just create a default kernel, um, you've probably heard me say that it's far better to have a custom kernel. It's usually more compact and specific to the machine you're building um, and the, the steps that are used in Linux and Scratch are not much different from what I'm going to show here because there's not a lot in them just by their very nature. Um, the other distribution I use regularly is Gen2. It's got a slightly different method for doing it. In fact they've got a fully automated method for building a kernel um, but it tends to be uh, because it's automated, it tends to not be um, ideal in terms of size of, or compactness. Um, so you may want to look at building your own kernel for you know, for Gen 2 or, or whichever other distribution you use. Um, so, but obviously if with each distribution, um, the method of uh, installation and integrating it into the bootloaders could be slightly different. Um, what, as I say, what we'll do is show you, um, as far as I can, the generic way of doing it. Um, I'm actually, the screen at the moment is actually Gen 2, but I will be, as I say, compiling from the um, original sources and showing how I can integrate that into Gen 2, even though it's not an official Gen 2 kernel release. Um, so it shouldn't be too much different for other distributions, but uh, you will have to, if you do use different distribution, you will have to uh, find out how and and where to install the kernel. If there's any other programs you might need to run to rebuild modules, for example, that are built against the kernel. Um, for example, in Gen 2, there's a, a command for rebuilding any modules, such as ZFS or VirtualBox, as they're built against the kernel. Um, and it automatically take those, takes those into account. If you're using Linux from scratch and you're using ZFS or VirtualBox, you'd have to rebuild those packages, or at least the modules yourself by hand. Um, so it's something to bear in mind. Um, so yeah, at the end of it, as I say, I'm gonna, after, after it's been built, I'll, I'll do another video on updating the kernel and just show them, uh, how, show you how that's done, show them booting, um, and, show that any, any other little bits of work that um, will need to be done because uh, uh, as you might appreciate the kernel is quite a complex bit of software its its main purpose is the interface between the hardware and the operating system if you like and any user programs uh, providing support for um, software to gain access to hardware and so on uh, so it's quite easy to select the wrong settings and end up with a kernel that doesn't boot or it hangs or certain features hardware doesn't work. So I'll be showing you how to try and avoid that um, and how to fix any issues uh, 